Slow internet sucks, and if your internet speed is sluggish or unreliable, it'll drive you so crazy you might just, I don't know, go to YouTube for advice. But seriously though, there are a lot of things out there, a lot of info to sort through, potential solutions to try, from the fake stuff to the stuff that's really technical and expensive, but if you're looking for some cheap, simple, practical advice, I've got a roundup of ideas for you. If you, want a quick, if you want a quick glance at the tips I'm about to go over, check out the table of contents in the description below and skip to the one you want to see. Now, let's get started. Now, look, let's just get this out of the way. Uh, and by the way, this is more of a last resort thing. Uh, first, you should try some of the other tips we're about to go over, but after you've tried a few practical solutions, if nothing's helping, maybe your provider just isn't cutting it and it's time to switch, if you're able to. And that's kind of the kicker, because some areas only have a single internet provider, and if that's the case for you, well, tough luck, I guess. But if you're curious what is available in your area, at reviews.org we like to use a zip code based search tool from highspeedinternet.com that quickly tells you which providers cover your area. So for instance, if you're using satellite internet but you can get cable or DSL, definitely go for one of those. Now the link for that tool is again in the description below. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's get to that practical stuff. Now your router needs a break, and I'll bet you rarely give it one. So this one's simple, just reset that router often, maybe even every day. Oh, and the modem too, if it's not combined with the router already. Resetting that modem actually refreshes your connection to your internet provider. But Craig, you say, that sounds like a lot of trouble. Well, I've got two words for you, outlet timer. Just put your router on an outlet timer and set it to turn on and off at a designated time every day. My suggestion, set it so that every night, sometime after everyone typically goes to bed, it turns itself off and then back on a few minutes later. So I linked to a good timer again down below. Now, will this make your internet blindingly fast? No, probably not, but maybe a little faster. More importantly though, it keeps it from getting bogged down over time. Remember, we're going for small, easy improvements here. Oh, and speaking of your router, make sure it's not in some corner of your house. Set it up toward the middle of the house on whichever floor you spend the most time in. This will help the Wi-Fi signal reach the entire house. Almost every router these days is Wi-Fi capable, which is extremely convenient. However, you'll typically lose some amount of that signal when it's transmitted through the air instead of directly through a cable. So, if it's possible, connect your most important devices with one of these. This isn't going to help you if you're browsing on your phone or tablet, but if you can hook it up to your laptop or your TV or your PlayStation or whatever you use to stream Netflix, you'll be a much happier camper. Oh, and as a bonus, Ethernet is far more secure also, so if you can use it on your primary computer, for instance, then that's suddenly a great place to do your online banking set. As you're browsing online, you're constantly seeing ads. Naturally, advertisers want to get your attention, so they're going to use a lot of pictures, GIFs, or worst of all, autoplayed videos. Anyway, the solution here is pretty simple. There are some great ad blocker plugins out there that stop those data heavy images and videos from automatically coming up on a page you're viewing. There's a good list of ad blocking software, again, I've linked to below. If you're interneting right, especially on a laptop or desktop, then the browser you're currently using has all sorts of bookmarks, auto open tabs, personalized new tab screens, the works. Set up a specialized secondary browser though that you can use when your connection feels a bit sluggish. My advice, try Opera. It's a downloadable browser that has a setting called Turbo Mode. It takes all that data on a page and compresses it so that it takes less time for your laptop or phone to load that page. There's a link to Opera in the description below. Just keep in mind that this is not your best bet as a primary browser since everything is so compressed and stripped down, but if you're on crappy hotel or airplane Wi-Fi, or if peak hours are just killing you, this is a great option. Now this is an important one and I hope you're doing it already, but just in case you're not, don't forget to regularly scan for viruses and malware. The best way to do this is simply to install some decent software that will take care of all the scanning automatically in the background. If you're looking for a recommendation, I'll just say look at the biggest names. Norton, McAfee, Bitdefender, they're all proven products that come at a reasonable price. Install one and make sure it's set up to run those auto scans fairly frequently. Now this is a simple one you've probably heard about already, but it's easy to forget to clear your browser's cache. I should know, I forget it all the time, but clearing your cache should be done regularly because as you browse online, almost every site you visit will serve you up some cookies and tracking pixels, which are basically just the info that follows you around online so that advertisers can give you more relevant ads. Are they harmful? No, not usually. It's mostly just benign marketing stuff. But if you have enough of them, they start to weigh down your browsing experience. So every once in a while, head to your internet browser settings where, and where it shows your history, clear that history, especially the cache and cookies. 
Plus, as a bonus, nobody will know about your secret My Little Pony themed browsing habits. Most internet service providers have multiple plans and it could be that you're on one that's just too slow for what you're trying to do. Yeah, it's nice to pay 30 bucks a month instead of 50 for your internet, but if you're constantly buffering or if you find yourself avoiding prime time hours because everything is just too slow, well, it might be worth that extra 20 bucks a month to stop worrying about all that stuff. So check your bill to find out what plan you're on, then call your provider to ask about other plans. But before you call, check their website to see what deals they're offering new customers. If you're upgrading and you have a good payment history and you ask nicely, they may be able to get you on a good deal that's normally reserved for new signups. But if push comes to shove, mention another plan from a different provider that you're thinking of switching to, it'll scare the crap out of them and they'll usually sweeten the deal real quick. Then while you're at it, here's another tip that falls in a similar category. Data caps, they're all the rage these days and there's a good chance you have one. And you might not even know it since data caps were announced and rolled out without a lot of fanfare from the internet service providers for obvious reasons. Anyway, a data cap basically works by, well, capping your data. It might be as high as one terabyte, which is a lot, but it could be lower, a couple hundred gigabytes maybe. And if you reach your data limit, your service provider will throttle your connection, which basically just means they slow it down severely. So if you haven't done it in a while, again, go give that bill a good look and see what your data cap is. Or you can call your internet provider and ask. If you're hitting that cap, think about upgrading your plan or watching a little less Netflix. All right, now this is a fairly technical tip and so I saved it toward the end, uh, but you may want to double check that your DNS server is the fastest one available. The domain name system server is the machine that routes traffic between you and the internet services you use. Imagine an old switchboard connecting phone calls, same principle, but automated. So every time you type in a web address or you fire up Netflix, your request is routed through a DNS server. Now, most devices use what's called auto config, which should hopefully be routing you through the fastest available DNS server, but it may not be. If you want to check, you can download a free piece of software that will run a test for you and tell you if you're on the fastest server. On my PC, I used a program called DNS Benchmark and it worked well. The technical part though comes in understanding what the test means and making the change if necessary. So, for step-by-step -step instructions on the entire process, I liked this article from LifeWire, which walks you through everything pretty well. The link is in the description below. All right, I hope there were a few tips in there that you can make use of. If you have more that don't involve taping CDs to your ethernet cables or convincing your ISP to install a second receiver at your house, well then I want to hear them, so throw them uh, in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching everybody, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Go say hi to us at reviews.org.